Uh, my name is David Gow and we are farming about five miles west of Oxford. The family have been here um, since 1880 and we are a combination of tenant farmers uh, of St John's College in Oxford and also the family owns some of the farm as well. Um, and we have on the side here uh, the River Thames um, which forms two kilometres of our farm boundary um, and the total farm size is about a thousand acres. On the farm we have a variety of crops, um, 300 acres of the farm is actually uh, ancient woodland split into various blocks, um, 120 acres is, a, is an SSSI which is a site of special scientific interest um, which can be quite challenging at times. Um, we also have um, about 600 acres of arable land in various crops and rotations. Um, we currently grow uh, winter wheat um, and maize. Maize we grow as a break crop for our next door neighbours who are arable farmers. Um, do temporary grass as well. We have a suckle herd, beef suckle herd on the farm at the moment. And then we have also diversified into uh, Christmas trees. Um, we have a retail shop which we've been uh, running for 10 years, although we have been selling Christmas trees back since the 1950s um, and we are also growing cricketbat willows. So the field we're standing in at the moment um, is now is in grass. Um, 20 years ago it was part of our arable rotation. Um, then back in uh, 1998 we went into a 10-year ESA agreement um, and this was put into um, arable reversion to extensive grassland, um, which was it was in for 10 years. Then we renewed our agreement in 2012 and we added wildflowers into it. So it is now an extensive grassland with wildflowers field. We manage it. Um, at the moment we have our beef suckle herd, so our beef cattle will come in here. Um, one year in three we take hay off it after the flowers have set. Um, so it is very much a low input, there's no fertiliser goes on here at all, it's just the livestock and it comes down to balance of uh, managing the livestock depending on the weather and the amount of grass cover that's in here. For our grass, traditionally when we're drilling grass um, we hire in a contractor who has a um, grass seed drill, direct, more direct grass seed drill um, and he came in and drilled it. Um, he has a lot of experience using his drill for conservation mixes um, and his seed rate can go down quite low so he drilled this um, back in 2000 and in autumn 2012 I think it was. The environmental aspect is important to us um, both because we've got the River Thames next to us um, so it's important to keep the water clean um, it's also important for the wildlife you know I'm fortunate where I live in the countryside and I like I like to see the wildflowers and the wildlife. Um, we have red kites here, we have barn owl boxes along the river bank, so it's really good for barn owl boxes and for barn owls. Um, there's various raptors about, insects are brilliant, um, and you can come down May, June, and you can just hear the grass is alive with insects, and it's brilliant. We also, as part of our diversification, we are growing cricket bat willows. The cricket bat willows are planted on 10 metre spacing, so you end up with a lot of ground in between that obviously you can't use for arable. Um, you can't use it for livestock because the tree, livestock will damage the trees in their early years. So I am looking to plant, um, looking to plant the ground up with wildflowers um, effectively as a wildlife habitat so the cricket bats are the primary crop and we can enhance the environment by growing um, the wildflowers in amongst it um, so we shall see we haven't actually been able to get any in yet we are just trialing our equipment in amongst the trees to make sure that that is uh, feasible but that is what we're aiming at um, so this field we were in um, was set aside for a long time and then we started planting the cricket bat willows here uh, about five years ago. Um, so the bigger trees on this side are the older trees. Um, and what we are going to try here is um, 
we're going to try using livestock to manage the habitat, which will give us the opportunity to, or well, the trees will become the primary cash crop and we can then manage the habitat to get our environmental benefits. Um, I have looked here at uh, seeding with wildflower seeds, but what I think we will do is we'll use this as a trial plot. The field behind the camera, we are due to put into cricket bat willow this autumn, and once we've taken the maize crop off, we will seed that to grass seed with a wildflower mix and then plant the cricket bat willows out there next spring. Um, and we'll then have um, a variety of habitats which we can manage differently or similarly um, to try and reach environmental benefits. We'll probably start off with using a traditional English livestock breed of cattle such as the Aberdeen Angus. Um, they have the ability to use the coarser grasses more efficiently um, but it will be using the livestock to manage the habitat as opposed to a commercial grass to fatten the livestock. Um, that's how we would look at it. At the moment um, we believe that cricket bats have only grown successfully in the UK. Um, we believe that other countries are trying to grow them. India we think is trying to grow them. We think Australia is trying to grow them. Um, but at the moment we think that the UK stroke England is the only country that is successfully growing them commercially. Um, as a willow tree, willows are very um, high in water demand as a growing tree. Um, so we started off growing them next to our river um, or streams. Um, I then decided, looking across the farm, we have willows growing elsewhere on the farm, or we have weeping willow and crack willow growing across the farm. My view was if we can, if crack willow and weeping willow would grow across the farm, why won't cricket bat willow? Admittedly, it may take a year or two longer to grow, but in theory, it should grow um, across the farm. Um, so I've decided to do field scale planting. Admittedly, in here, we do have an irrigation system to get the trees growing in the first two to three years. But after three years, we believe that we can leave the trees to themselves and they will go on and grow into successful cricket bat willows. It may take 20 years as opposed to 17 or 16 years, but we still think it's worthwhile. I've been working with Cotswold Seed, quite I think, over 20 years. I think they are, I like the website. They have a very good website, which makes it easy to find what I'm uh, after. Um, they also have very knowledgeable staff. Um, they get emails from me asking queries, and they always seem to come back with very helpful advice. Um, and they are relatively local as well so if I need something in a hurry I can go over um, pick it up um, at the same time they have a 24-hour delivery so brilliant.